Let's make a skull repeating pattern. The way I'm going to begin is to use the ellipse tool and make three ellipses. Kind of like this. Move this up. And then the third one will be where the teeth goes. I'm going to kind of distort that so it looks like the upper lip or the upper part of the skull. And then move them all together. Like this. Reshape them a little bit. Good. Maybe add a little bit of point to the head. Okay. Now, with these the way they are, I'm going to select them all, go to my Pathfinder tool, and unite them. So that's the beginning. Okay, let's do some teeth. Let's get some the lips tool. Make the first tooth. Flatten the, the end to make it look more like a tooth. Good. Make it a little bit bigger. Like that. Okay. Now, with that selected, I'm going to do a Command C to copy and Command B that pastes it behind. And then with my arrow keys, I can move these teeth around. Okay. I'm going to do a Command C, Command B. Command C, Command B. Maybe one more. Command C and Command B. Good. Now I can reshape these a little bit, make them a little bit more organic by having them at different sizes. Yes. And then maybe make this one a little bit pointier for the incisor. Or any other thing you want to do. All right. Now I'm going to select them all. And I'll probably group them. And then I'm going to go up to Object. Just download it. Object. And then Transform. And Reflect. So I get an exact copy. Vertical at 90 degrees. I'm going to hit copy and then I can move that over next to the other front too. Good. And then once I select them all, I can resize them so that they fit on the upper gum. There. Might move it up so I don't see that gap in between. There. So there it is. There's the teeth. Now I'm going to grab my ellipse tool. Fill with black. Take off the stroke, I suppose. And draw the first eye. And what I might do is I might add a few more points on here. To distort it a little bit. Make it look a little bit more organic. Another point at the top. Good. Now I'm going to once again go up to object, transform, reflect, copy, and then move that eye over. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm not even holding my shift. I just want it over there somewhere. All right, now let's do the nose. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I mean, not a rectangle. Obviously, that's an ellipse. I'm going to grab this one point. I'll move it over here offset off a bit. 
Let me make this one a little bit longer. And move it into place. And move this over. The options are all over the place. And it's totally up to you. All right, now there's my skull. Now, now that I have my skull, let me zoom out. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Here. Here it is. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, next thing I'm going to do to make a seamless tile, I'm going to make sure I have my rulers open. And I'm going to draw some lines. I'm going to leave less space at the top and at the right and a little bit more space underneath and to the left. Okay, now I'm going to make my pattern. I'm going to make sure these are all grouped. Object group and I'm also going to expand them. Okay, fill and stroke. So this is now expanded and it is a group. So let me go ahead and create a bunch of little littler littler squares or skulls. Making sure that as I duplicate these, none of them go over the top line or the right line. But I can overlap the left line and the bottom but no shape can overlap the, the left and the bottom just go ahead and make another one a little small guy here Now, now I'm going to put some on the bottom. Like one over here. Maybe a bigger one here. Maybe a little bit small one in between. Like this. And maybe a smaller one over here. Making sure that they don't go over two lines. Great. So here they are. This is basically what my pattern looks like to begin with. I'm going to group these guys. And now, with my guide selected, I am going to create a red rectangle. Red so I can see what's going on. Or some color other than black. And I'm going to draw a, rect or a rectangle over my guides. Okay, I'm going to make it a red. Now here's the tricky part. I have to select the skulls that, ex let's, yeah, no, that's good. I'm going to select this and move it over, holding my shift until the the right line the left line on this one is exactly over the right line on the other one so let's see let's zoom in and see oops you know what i forgot to select the you have to select the line too what a goof okay so i selected the line and now i'm going to make sure that the right line and the left line overlap. Okay, let me zoom in and make sure that that is the case. Okay, not while it's still selected, I can still move it around with the arrow keys. All right, just like that. Okay, then I'm going to do the same going up. I'm going to select these guys including the red rectangle and I'm going to move it up 
so that the bottom line and the top line are exactly over each other. It is right there. And I'm going to zoom in, make sure that is good. Yes. You see how it overlaps the top and the bottom? Yeah, I'll move it around so you can see what it's not supposed to be there. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is get rid of the lines, the rectangles, and I am going to draw a rectangle over my original squares. like that and then selecting them all I'm going to go to my pathfinder and hit the crop tool and there is my seamless tile if I open up my swatches and I drag it in there now when I draw a rectangle or any shape I can fill it with a seamless skull pattern. Now, I could also take this as it is, copy it, go to Photoshop, do a Command N, opens up a new document, Command V, paste the pixels in there. And now I have my seamless tile in Photoshop. So now if I do a Command A and select everything, I can go to Edit and Define Pattern. We call it Skulls. Skulls. And now when I open up a new document, yeah, let's make it a thousand by a thousand. And now I can go up to edit, fill, pattern, pick my skulls. And there it is. A seamless pattern in Photoshop. And then once you have the seamless tile in Photoshop, you can do all kinds of things. You can save that as a background image for a, a web page. You can do other things like fill this with white. I can de decrease the opacity, use it as a background for all kinds of things. I also can go over here. And type, I don't know, bonehead. Let's go over some kind of color here so we can see it. Yeah, let's make it bigger. Five to something like impact. So we can see it even better. Good. Now if I select that and turn it off, I can go down to my background layer, do a copy, command C and a command V. And you can see that now Bonehead has that background. And of course, I can't see it very good, so if I add a stroke, 